Charles, um, you mentioned the ESIA is currently being carried out by... Uh, sister, I was raised in the village. Me, I know they here for me. Well, so, sorry. So try I, to I speak. I can't help the way I speak. You mentioned that the ESIA was being carried out at the moment. Um, the EIA Act of 1992... I need interpreter. Well, you have enough people next to you. The EIA Act of 1992 states that an EIA must be approved by the Federal Ministry of Environment yes. before the commencement of any project. No, Unless it's, an exemption it's has not been also, given. There is preliminary approval, there is final approval. Has what? an exemption been given? And if so, if you have the preliminary approval... Exemption of what? For the project to start without the final approval. If you have the preliminary approval, can this be shared? We are the following public? due process. So can we have a it copy of the It is federal government that approval? gives the approval. It's not you. It's so can we have a government. copy of the preliminary we, approval? We have the approval. And you can make that public to the media? Everything in order. Okay, thank you. Two more questions, please. First of all, I must give kudos, credence to this beautiful journalist that stood her ground and ensured that the minister did not intimidate her. Her name is Lala Johnson Salami, an Arise TV journalist. She was asking the Minister of Work a very important question. But the Minister of Work wanted to intimidate her to you know, make her question to look like a mockery so she will not be able to ask the right question. And I want to ask a question. If she was a foreign journalist, would the Minister have asked her that question? Would the Minister have talked about her accent? Is the minister trying to say that he has not had a meeting with a um, foreign um, counterpart before that speak the way Lala Salami spoke? Will he say that? So why is he trying to intimidate her? And there's a reason why he was trying to do that, but we'll get into all of that. First of all, in case you are not aware, she was asking the minister a very important question. She was asking him about the environmental and social impact assessment of that project. The environmental and social impact assessment serve as a comprehensive tool for identifying and managing potential environmental and social impact associated with projects, ensuring that the operations align with the highest standard of environmental stewardship and social responsibility. A project of such magnitude needs an environmental and social assessment impact. It has to look at the future impact of that, of that project. How is it going to impact the community? Is it going to pose a danger to them? Is it going to affect the environment? What are the environmental risks associated with building such a project of such magnitude? That is what she was asking about. Every project of such magnitude comes with an environmental and social impact assessment. It comes with it. Now, if you listen to the minister carefully, he said something about this is a federal government project that means what the minister is saying that are you expecting the federal government to carry out an assessment um, of impact on the project the federal government is carrying out who owns the ministry of environment that is what the minister is asking who owns the ministry of environment now this is why you need uh, checks and balance in a system in a democratic system the ministry of works that dave umai is handling is concerned about building projects but the ministry of environment will give advice to the ministry of work on the kind of project they should carry out if they want to carry out a particular project the ministry of environment will advise them on the potential risk of that project and the ministry of environment should be a ministry that is filled with professionals that understand environmental impact because if you don't do this you can build a project that may collapse in years to come you can build a project that will not be used by the people in years to come another thing that needs to be carried out when you want to do a project of such magnitude is what we call the needs assessment you need to carry out the needs assessment the needs assessment will determine if this project is needed at that point in time let me give you for instance when peter Robi came to power in anambra state now he wanted to revamp the educational system in Anambra State. He did a needs assessment in the educational sector in Anambra State. And after that was done, it was discovered that Anambra State has thousands of schools that have been abandoned. That means Anambra State does not need to build new schools. What Anambra State needed at that moment was to rehabilitate the existing schools. So that was what Mr. Pitobi did. And 
thousands of schools were rehabilitated and, hand, and some of them were handed over to the mission. That's the reason why he was able to achieve what he achieved in Anambra educational sector. Has there been a need assessment that has been carried out for this project to ensure that this project is needed? Dave Umayi, for instance, is the Minister of Works. While he was a governor in a Boeing state, he built an airport of 36 billion naira. I don't think a commercial plane has landed in that airport. That airport in years to come will go marable. Why? Dave Umayi did not carry out the needs assessment for that project to know if that project is needed in a Boeing state. So the ESIA and the needs assessment are two most important things that should be carried out if a project of such magnitude is to be done. But it's obvious that none of this has been done so far. The federal government just wake up and they said we want to build this project. You remember this project has been conceived since 2007, but barely seven months in office, Bolami Tinibu decided he wants to build this project. So to tell you that none of this was carried out because seven months is not enough to carry the ESIA and the needs assessment. If they have done the needs assessment for this project, Nigerians would have told them that we don't need this project at this particular point of time or at this particular point on time. We need lights. Give us stable electricity. That is what we need at this particular point in time. Rather than answering her question directly, the minister was trying to, you know, deflect the question. He was trying to dodge and run away from it because if he has those documents, it would have been made available to the journalists and these documents would have been online for the public to go and assess them. If this, if this particular document has been online, I don't think this lady would have gone there to ask this important question that the minister dismissed. Where is the document? You are having a stakeholder meeting on that project and you did not come with a very important document like the ESIA. That is a joke. It shows you how hasty this project has been conceived. And a lot of persons are talking about this project. If the federal government is true to itself, the federal government would have discontinued this project because it shows this project is being done not in the good faith of Nigerians. Absolutely not. Because if ESIA has not been carried out of this project, it's going to cause a major catastrophe in the future. It might even be abandoned. It will get to a point when they build this project, they will get to a point where they have to abandon it because they cannot continue it anymore. So all the money that has been spent, where has it gone? So many projects in Nigeria today that you see has been abandoned is because ESIA was not conducted on those projects. And the needs assessment was equally not conducted on those projects. I can tell you for a real fact. That is the reason why you have so, more, so many Maribond projects in this country. And this lady was asking a very important question. I am sure the minister is an engineer. Of course, an engineer be an architect. He understands what she's saying. But these things are not available for this project. That is why the people in the opposition they are scrutinizing this project very well because this is a project of large magnitude 15 trillion naira project it's not something you just wake up in seven months and you want to do no it's something that you must plan from the beginning to the end and it's something that once it's completed the people will make use of this project it will not become marabon it will not be abandoned it will not be neglected by the people just the same way the Ebony airport has been neglected and abandoned by the people. How many persons are using the Ebony airport today? How many persons? How many commercial, commercial flights has landed in that airport? So kudos to that lady for asking such sensitive and important question. And we hope and we are expecting that the government will provide that document. It should be online and people will have access to it. The minister question shows how careless they are. It shows how careless they are for saying that it's a federal government project. There are checks and balance in a democratic system. Not in Nigeria when things are done lawlessly. I can tell you for a fact that the Senate did not vet this project. They did not vet it. Lack of check and balance. They did not vet it. That is why the minister is telling you that it's a federal government project. That means the federal government just wake up one day and decide to carry out the project. The Ministry of Environment should be carried along this project. 
an extensive ESA should be carried out and also the needs assessment. The Ministry of Environment will now give feedback to the Ministry of Work and tell them don't go or go ahead. If this has been satisfied through, then that document should be online. But I can tell you for free that these documents are not available. Thank you for watching. I I'll see you in the next video.